Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'll cover the basics of connecting to network devices in different subnets with Wireless Workbench 6. Wireless Workbench was designed originally to connect you to networked Sure devices that are on a local network, or think like devices connected directly to your computer. But as the usage of wireless equipment has scaled more to larger corporate enterprise networks or distributed rooms in an educational campus, let's say, the need to connect your devices in different networked subnets has arisen. So in a recent update, we've added this capability directly to Wireless Workbench. I'll go through some of the basics of how to set this up, and then you can try this at home on your own network. So you'll notice right now, I've got a connection to a network with zero devices. You can notice that because my inventory is empty. That's because I'm in a corporate network right now at Sure headquarters, and there are devices that I can access, but they're not on my local subnet. They're on a different subnet that I can route to through our enterprise router, but I'm going to set that up right now and show you how that works. The Preferences dialog in Wireless Workbench features a network tab. In this network tab, all of the controls are there to configure which network Wireless Workbench connects to. And you'll notice the network interface I have selected is our corporate network. There it is. Uh, but there are no devices connected to that particular subnet. In order to access devices in different subnets, we have to use a different way of connecting to them. Automatic discovery, as it would typically work in a local network, it doesn't work in this application. The Remote Devices tab is designated to allow you to look for and specify the IP addresses of devices in different subnets. Now, I just want to call out one thing. I have to have the network interface selected through which my computer is going to be able to route to different subnets. If I had um, a wireless network that was connected to only one rack of gear but didn't route to a larger network, I wouldn't be able to use that particular network interface. So I need to select the network interface that's going to be a routable point to different subnets on my network. You can talk to your IT administrator if you've got more questions about that. So this Remote Devices tab uh, lets me specify the IP addresses of devices in different subnets I want to connect to. Now, as I mentioned, automatic discovery doesn't work in this application. So if you know the IP address of your devices, you can enter them in one at a time. Now, that might be a bit cumbersome, and I don't know the exact IP addresses of the devices I want to connect to. But I know that they're in this .203 range. So I can use this uh, range checkbox to specify all of the IP addresses in the 192.168.203 range between 1 and in this case 254. And I'll press this plus button to add those IP addresses to the list. I'll press apply just to apply those changes. Now you'll notice these are just IP addresses, but once I press apply, Wireless Workbench goes out and checks at each one of those IP addresses. And if it sees a device, it'll make a connection. And as you've noticed in the background, all of my devices popping up in the inventory indicates that a formal connection has been made. So this IP list, though it's simply managed as a preference in Wireless Workbench, will remember these IP addresses and try to connect to devices in different subnets when you've entered them in here. Now, some of these IP addresses don't have devices, as you can see by this gray bar here, and some do. If I want, I can just leave this entire IP list saved in Wireless Workbench, and any and every time I launch the application, it'll attempt to connect to all these IP addresses. If a device is there the next time I launch, then it'll show up right in Workbench. I can import or export this list if I want to share it with somebody else, or if I want to get rid of all these IP addresses where there aren't any devices, I can simply click Clean Up, and that removes all of the uh, IP addresses for which there are no devices. So that's pretty much it. Once I've connected to these devices in different subnets, they look and feel and smell like any device would in Wireless Workbench that was on a local network. There's just one other thing I want to call out here, and that is that the uh, network settings of these devices need to be configured in a pretty particular way. We're not going to go into the details here, but I just want to call out that in order for this cross subnet connection to work, you not only need a valid IP and subnet mask, but the gateway of each device needs to be specified such that it points to the router that's sending traffic between subnets. Again, you're definitely going to want to talk to an IT administrator to get all that sorted out, but in most corporate enterprise networks, this is the way things are configured to begin with. So with that, I'll close this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, or you'd like to see different types of tutorials for Wireless Workbench 6, be sure to leave a comment down below. Thanks.